It is not just hair and it has never been just hair. Anyone who says that, anyone who says, oh, it's just hair, it's always really crinkled my taint because it's just so obviously glib. It's like the uh, I don't see color type of rhetoric. Obviously guys, I'm jumping right into this get ready with me and I know I'm late, but I want to talk about this recent H&M controversy but I'm really just using that to frame a bigger discussion. In case you missed it, about a week ago, there were some images from H&M's website with a little black girl with her Afro textured hair, and a lot of people were heated about the presentation of said Afro textured hair. There are a few images of her in this campaign, and the ones that have people talking the most are the ones where her hair is in a ponytail. I'm not proud to say it, but for better or for worse, I'm always honest with y'all. And I was also taken aback by this little girl's hair at first blush. It was one of many moments that I've had in my life that forced me to confront my own internalized racism. I constantly have to check myself on things where my initial thought or response may not be something that I'm proud of, something that's a relic of internalized racism or other destructive conditioning that I'm still trying to work through day by day, situation by situation. I know that since I've started doing these types of videos, more and more of you have wanted me to weigh in on various issues and stories as they happen, but I wanted to always be clear that I am deeply flawed. I don't want to give off the impression that I'm some sort of tastemaker for public opinion. I'm just trying to get through the day and I don't know the answer most of the time. Now, it's no surprise to me that the outrage over this little girl's hair in these photos is pretty much exclusively from the black community. My day ones know that I have never had a perm. Though it wasn't that long ago, it was really shaking the table that my mom opted not to perm or relax my hair. So, my cornrows and whatever other styles I was wearing at any given time were the subject of much ridicule while I was in school. My hair is one of the main things that ostracized me from befriending other black girls. I was taunted and bullied for not having a perm. I went to predominantly white schools, by the way, but it was the black girls at school making fun of me for my hair incidentally. So it was a very lonely feeling. Not too long ago, I did a video on why black women wear weave and makeup and why it's wrong to stereotype wig and weave wearing as an outgrowth of self-hate. At least I certainly don't think it's fair to assume it's always self-hate, perhaps not even usually, but it is also abundantly clear that it is still quite common that self-loathing is indeed the issue for many black women when it comes to how they choose to wear their hair. For many of us, wigs and whatnot are indeed self-expression, convenience, and little more than that. But let's not pretend that there aren't a lot of black women who wouldn't be caught dead showing their real hair in a YouTube video or just in public ever, who have convinced themselves that they just prefer straight hair, that they just look better with straight hair, and that they somehow just don't look right with the hair texture that actually grows out of their own scalps. Anti-blackness within the black community is all too real, and I think it's the main factor in the response that so many people had to this little girl's hair. I Am Eloho did a video on this, which is how I first heard about the whole controversy, and she was saying that because all the kids in the H&M campaign had similarly messy hair, the fact that the black community, we were othering our own within this context was holding up a mirror to ourselves. And indeed, for one of the jackets that the little girl is modeling, the same exact jacket is modeled in a different color by a racially ambiguous little girl, and her hair is in a messy ponytail or bun or something as well. But since she has good hair, I guess no one has anything to say about that. I do agree with the notion that this backlash says a ton about our own issues as black people. However, I don't think for a second 
that that was H&M's intention. I don't know what they were trying to do, but I do not for one second think that H&M had noble, altruistic, or woke intentions because we already know that they're tone deaf. H&M's intentions are not what interests me though. At this point, H&M's intentions are moot. We are not used to seeing little black girls with their hair like that in public. Not in public, only in our homes and hidden away. Or if we do see little girls with their hair like this, we cast all sorts of judgments and assumptions on the child's mother, never the father, and or the child's home life in general. And I told y'all I am flawed. I have participated in this myself. My niece is biracial. Her mother is Italian. Some of you guys will remember me going to Italy on that trip where I went to Paris and Barcelona as well, like three years ago. Well, my niece's uncle, her mom's brother, he and his wife had recently adopted a little black girl. So we were all over at the family home in Italy and we were having a celebration after my niece's first communion. And my mom and I were pretty much aghast at how my niece's new cousin's hair was looking. It was just clear that her parents had no idea what to do with Afro textured hair. It was in all sorts of weird little ponytails and it wasn't even long enough to be pulled into ponytails at all. Her hair looked very uh, fine and brittle and dry, just not really cared for properly. And as I said, my mom and I were aghast. Like we really could not let it go. The entire party, every time this little girl walked by, we were just like, we really need to talk to them and let them know how to look after this little girl's hair because they're gonna be out here in Italy and she's gonna be looking crazy and yada, yada, yada. Long story short, we were just way too pressed, no pun intended, about this little girl's hair looking crazy, at least crazy to us. As black people, we've had to conform for so long to a society and to systems and to standards that don't respect or value us that there are genuinely people who don't even know what black hair looks like naturally. We've been altering Afro textured hair for so long that I've dead ass had conversations with white people who sincerely thought that black people just grow straight hair like anyone else and I had to set them straight. Again, no pun intended. And don't start blowing up the comments with, there are black people with naturally straight hair. There are black people with naturally blonde hair. There are black people who have blue eyes. We know, of course we know that, but to act like these features and traits are typical or even common amongst black people is just being contrary for the sake of being contrary. And it's a distraction from what we're actually discussing today. The people who want to harp on the fact that there are some black people with naturally straight hair are probably also the type who say, um, I think you mean Frankenstein's monster. Like, shut up, we know. The issue here is that Afro textured hair, and in particular, the type of Afro textured hair that the little girl in the H&M photos has, hair of this texture is still hidden away more often than not, either manipulated through styling or simply covered up altogether. And yes, even now in 2019, that is the case. Messy straight or wavy curly hair is cute and carefree. Messy 4C hair is a crisis. Like, oh girl, is you okay? Is you good? Cause I want to know. We've been hiding our hair away for centuries. And now when it is seen, which in itself is a relatively new phenomenon in, in American culture anyway, there's a very specific standard of what is desirable and beautiful. We talk so often about hair being laid and that phrase is so on the nose. Lay it down, beat it down until it is fried, dyed, and laid to the side. Well, Afro textured hair by nature stands up. Maybe it's time we start to stand up for our own Afros with sincerity. Lashes, one second. It was one of those struggle bus days putting on these lashes, y'all. Anyway, when it comes to natural hair, a very specific aesthetic is demanded and we, black people, are a big part of that problem. For almost a decade now, I have watched hair vloggers talk about loving their natural hair, loving their 4C hair, and clearly that is not the case. The way I see so many of these women handling their hair on YouTube and social media though, honestly not that much nowadays because I hardly ever watch hair videos at this point. It's like watching anti-black sentiment and self-hate being carried out in real time the way these women are handling their hair. Obviously not all, but I see it a lot. I see people combing, 
and combing and combing and combing and then using a Denman brush and then every curl custard and gel and perm rod they had in the ethnic hair care aisle trying to coax their kinks into behaving the way they think that they ought to. Just like, so help me God, I'm going to turn my kinks into curls if it kills me. I've had comments on my hair videos telling me how I'm doing wrong simply because I don't gel my hair or slick down my edges, and I just never have. I didn't grow up having that done. We didn't even have gel in our house, so I don't do it to myself now. Simple as that. But the disparaging comments that I get are just an updated version of the same shit I dealt with growing up for not having a perm. There is still a very clear version of right and wrong, pretty and ugly when it comes to black hair. Even though hair texture doesn't have a consistently direct correlation to skin complexion, after all, there are plenty of people with darker skin than mine who have loose curls or waves or whatever. But it would be disingenuous and naive to pretend that texturism isn't just an offshoot of internalized racism and colorism. Biracial and multiracial people come in a vast range of shades and have all sorts of different hair textures. After all, a person who is Latin and Asian is just as biracial as a person who is black and white. But there's something to be said about a prototypical biracial aesthetic that we've been fed for years and years and the value that so many of us place on exemplifying the features within that aesthetic. Y'all know what I'm talking about, light skin, light eyes, and type two and type three, maybe 4A type hair. They're all part of that very highly prized and fairly monolithic biracial aesthetic. And this aesthetic is prized because of its distance from the monolithic image of blackness. For so many, the closer you are to the monolithic image of a black girl or black woman, the farther away you are from beauty. I wanna dig deeper into that on another day, but I only bring this up to reiterate that the tighter the texture and the more the hair kinks and curls, the farther it is away from whiteness and the less we are used to seeing it. Real talk, people hate to see it. I'm pretty tired of people pandering to 4C hair because I know y'all hate to see it. We have such a long history of that kind of hair being unprofessional, unpresentable, and unkempt. We are well past the point of this being something that only non-black people do to us. We've been doing it to each other for centuries now. I've made it no secret that I think the hair typing system is just another version of the brown paper bag test. But I play along and I use it here on YouTube because I know that this is the terminology that people use and because I want people to find my content when they're doing searches, let's be real. In short, 4C hair remains so underrepresented and unseen because the vast majority of people don't accept it, let alone love it. They don't wanna have 4C hair. They don't wanna see 4C hair. Y'all wanna watch the girls with thick, long, type three and maybe 4A hair, but they don't want what I have, even though it is very, very likely it's what they have too. Some of the people who hate 4C hair the most are the people with 4C hair. Because it's not like 4C hair is the least common texture by any stretch. Go to any black salon, braid shop, or barber shop and just look around. But beauty standards that never made spaces for us have taught us to hate the features that are unambiguously, undeniably black. 4C hair is too black, straight up. Even though 4C hair is everywhere, white supremacy has us perpetuating 4C hair being the least seen hair texture, even and perhaps especially amongst ourselves within our own communities. If you leave 4C hair as it is, rather than forcing it into some curl pattern with laid edges and a defined wash and go or defined twist out or whatever when you leave your house, your hair ain't done. Even in the images with this little girl and the ponytail, like why'd they even force her hair into this ponytail? The little girl has fine hair and it isn't long, which is just an observation, not a value judgment. But yet again, it's forcing her hair into doing something unnecessarily, just like at that family lunch in Italy when they had that little girl's hair and all these 
ponytails just like just leave her hair alone forcing her hair into this ponytail for what just let it be I don't think anyone is nearly as outraged over the shots where this little girl's hair is loose anyway plus they appear to have laid her edges in those ones where her hair is loose so that's very important to a lot of people has there always been this obsession with edges I certainly never knew of it until I got into YouTube but damn people will seriously decide whether you deserve to live or die based on some edges. The little girl has fine hair and fine edges like a lot of us. When did having thin edges become synonymous with being completely inferior? People act like you're straight up stupid and worthless over some edges or lack thereof. I've never had edges and yet somehow, some way, I've lived a very lovely life and I know that I still have value. I mean, thank God I didn't grow up with social media because I never even felt insecure about my hairline until I started getting crazy comments on YouTube, if I'm honest. I legit never thought much about it. But it goes back to policing each other to meet a certain standard, a standard, in fact, that never included us in the first place. Kim over at For Harriet also did a video on this H&M thing that I watched. And in her video, she said, how she can go out with her hair not done, looking ashy, and it doesn't bother her until she sees another black person. And I was like, girl, same. Though these standards are and were born out of being forced to meet certain aesthetics to be palatable, to be accepted into white society, to do things necessary for our survival, like getting jobs, black people are often the harshest critics and most dutiful enforcers of these standards of having our hair laid, of what is presentable. I actually grabbed some of the photos that I've been showing you guys from this campaign from Essence, just because it was easier for me than trying to find all the images on H&M's own website. When I went to download the images, whoever put them on Essence.com gave the images titles like H&M Natural Done and H&M Natural undone referring to the shots where the little girl's hair is loose with her edges somewhat slicked versus in the ponytail respectively i'll actually link the images on essence directly in the description box so that you guys can see this in the image urls for yourselves because obviously essence is a black publication so i thought that was interesting black people are often the least open and able to start taking the necessary steps to let go of these foreign standards and start to truly accept ourselves as we are. Despite my cynicism over H&M's actual intentions, whatever they may be, I do think there's value in these images of this little girl because there are a lot, and I mean a lot of little black girls out there who might see her a model and those little girls also have fine 4C hair and they also have fine edges and therefore they'll be able to see themselves. You know, edges and defined curls aren't everything. They literally have nothing to do with what kind of person you are or what your inherent worth is. There is a whole lot more to life than gelling down some baby hairs. Then again, maybe I only feel that way because I don't have any. I'm gonna throw on a lip and my finishing touches like some bottom mascara and a couple other things and I'll be right back with the final look. transition out of the awkward slow-mo shots. Thank you as always for keeping me company and hanging out with me while I got ready today. I do want to hear from you guys in the comments, hear what you thought. As I said, you know, I probably had what would be the less than correct response initially. You kind of can't help how you first react to something, but you can help how you respond. As black people, we are all working through so much negative conditioning and so much subjugation, but we do need to start confronting these issues that we have with our own hair in particular, with very, very highly textured, kinky, not so curly, Afro textured hair. 
I realize that I'm definitely a TT come lately with weighing in on my thoughts here, but I've just had a very busy past week, two weeks. Not to mention I'm fighting a cold, so you guys might hear that I sound a little congested, but I usually win. I very rarely get sick, so fingers crossed that I can beat this one too. And by the way, in case you missed it, before I get out of here, I am doing my first run of official Nappy Headed Jojoba merch. It is in reference to a non sequitur I made a couple videos ago uh, where I said, bitch, that wasn't a read, I was just browsing. So there are t-shirts and hoodies in a few different colors. I will link the campaign in the description box. It runs for about another week, so you have a little time to get your coins together if you want to get involved before the campaign ends. But beyond that, I got nothing. So thank you for hanging out with me all the way to the end of the video. And before before I get out of here, I will leave you with a gentle reminder. And that reminder is to never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm going to take that down. <laughs>